good everyone i hope you guys have an amazing day so in the last episode i spoke about uh, natural language processing a brief introduction to nlp um, and i hope you like that uh, episode if you haven't watched it i would highly encourage you to watch it uh, now what i'm going to do today i'll just going to want to talk a little bit more uh, in terms of nlp uh, just to make you guys understand what goes behind the scene right uh, behind the scene from a 10,000 feet overview right i'm not gonna get into the neat um, detailed nitty-gritty algorithmic aspect of nlp that's not this course is about that's not this certification is all about if you're really interested to learn nlp amazon has aws has their nlp course azure has and even you know pytorch does some course in nlp you can check those out right if you're really interested okay so as i explained in the previous episode right it's nlp is a branch of computer science right or in other words i would say it's a branch of artificial intelligence which deals with linguistic right so when i say linguistic the kind of words you speak the kind of so you know, we humans, right, take conversation for granted. Let's say if I wanted to have a conversation with somebody saying, hey, let's go for a coffee, right? And or um, if I say, hey, sup, coffee, right? If, if I'm talking to someone who I often meet and, and that person will understand, sup, coffee means, all right, he's talking about a coffee. I don't have to talk about which place should be meeting, what time, because if you're meeting... Let's say, you know, I sometimes meet my mate for a coffee and I just have to tell him, hey, coffee. And he knows, right, which part of town we go for a coffee. So that's obvious. But if, if someone else listening to a conversation said, what do you mean? Are you talking, are you saying, do you want coffee now? Or do you expect the coffee person to bring you coffee? And what kind of coffee you're after? Is that flat ride? Is that you know, Turkish coffee? Or is that a cappuccino? Or is that... Uh, long black um, because you know a person listening to that conversation right will make assumptions without understanding the context the same happens in natural language processing the context is very important right so that it can give you the right expected uh, outcome so and it works very different uh, you know like for instance, if you're talking about English, English is a very simple language, but that's not the case when you deal with Japanese or Hebrew or Thai or, you know, other languages, right? Um, so it, it makes it a bit interesting and challenging at the same time. Um, so um, for a human being, you know, it's easy to adapt, but uh, uh, artificial intelligence or natural language processing at this stage at least what is exposed to a general public is not very advanced. Like I said, military might have their own stuff, but they normally don't talk about it. And I, and as I said in the previous episode, I'm speculating it. They may have or may not, but you know, certain things are classified. So you can't really tell, right? So obviously they won't be telling us what they have. So that being said, um, you know, uh, when you talk about natural language processing from what we have at this stage for a general, uh, audience um, there are a few things uh, which Salesforce has Salesforce mentioned it's very simple and I really like the way they explain things right they didn't really get into the uh, very detailed integrity so uh, when you when I talk about natural language process think about uh, you know in different chunks right so um, you, we speak long sentences right and sometimes when you write long sentences you often terminate one part of a sentence with a comma or full stop, right? I'm talking from an English perspective, right? Other language will have different ways, right? Um, maybe different. Um, so uh, segmentation is, right, breaking the big chunk of statement into smaller statements, uh, followed by comma, explanation mark, or whatever, right? And so, so that it's easy to parse that part. Like if I give you a big para, right? Um, say, uh, let's say I give you a big para how to brew a beer, right? you know, start with the hops and malts and in you know, the right temperature and the right equipment and kind of stuff, right? Um, so it will break that into smaller sentences based on the um, end of sentence character 
maybe a full stop, maybe a space or uh, whatever, right? Uh, just for the sake of argument, let's assume that we're talking uh, in terms of a full stop, right? The full stop will assume that a big para will be broken down into four or five sentences, right? That's segmentation. Then we have tokenization, like the sentence what you've broken down, right? From a para, from a paragraph, uh, you got, um, say, four sentences, and that four sentences contains, let's say, 10 words each or 15 words each. So tokenization is breaking down your sentence into words. And now you can do that because in English language, you often separate your words with a space, right? So you can say, okay, this is one word, this is one word. So that's, and, um, so that's a pretty simple process, right? In English, right? Just, you can write a parser, which extract the words based on space. Now, then we have a steaming, right? A stemming, uh, however you pronounce it. So it's like breaking the word into the root form. Uh, what I mean that, like, let's take an example what Salesforce gives you, right? I'm going outside to, to rack leaves. So stem equals to leave here, st the word it grabbed is the leave. He always leave the key in the lock. So stem equal to leave here. The both sentence has a different meaning when it comes to leaves, right? One refers to a leaf and one refers to, uh, you know, keeping something um, like, you know, both means different, right? And this is a different, uh, these sentences mean different and the word means different. But here, the stemming is not really identifying that. It's just putting us, putting both the, the, the word um, in the same context, whereas the spelling is the same, but it means different, right? But it can't differentiate that. So stemming is like, okay, this, I have two sentences, both have the same spelling, but I have a word, matches each other. I don't give a, you know, dang about um, the context. All right, that means the same. So that's stemming. And then we have uh, lemmatization. Uh, in that, it actually tried to infer the meaning out of it, right? So that if you go by the same example, um, so if you look at it, so leaves and leaves here means the different, right? Both means different. One means the leaf, uh, which you're talking about from a plan perspective. Other, you're talking about leaving something, right? So these are important. This is very important uh, things you need to consider when you're designing a model or de designing a solution, which you claim to support NLP. So these are the things, the basic things which you should keep into consideration. Like I said, this is a 10,000 view overview of what goes inside the NLP. It's not really a details, nitty gritty picture of NLP. NLP is a broad, broad topic, right? It might take you months to understand, to learn to algorithms, to build the right thing, right? So it's not just about, uh, right now we're not focusing that. Our intention is not to get into the very detail aspect of it. Our intention is just to make, um, so, you know, just to make sure that when you're having a conversation with someone who don't understand artificial intelligence, who don't understand the detail and integrity maths aspect of it or mathematics aspect of it, you can explain to them, hey, this is what uh, the NLP means. These are what are the things that goes behind the scene. I hope that's clear and simple, right? And then you have something called, I just don't want to, you know, get into details. You say this is talking about algorithms, but just for now, on a broader context, these are the things you should remember. Right. And then there is something called semantic uh, analysis, which is called sentiment analysis. They're talking about it. And then they talk about intent analysis, contact analysis. So when you read a statement, right? So if you can infer uh, in, uh, whether the statement gives you a positive or a negative or a neutral sentiment. So, um, so for instance, um, if I, I, I tell you a very simple example, right? And it's a personal example. I call, uh, I live in a small town. I don't want it to name it because I don't want it to name anything, but this is inefficiency at the peak. Um, so I, I, I commute sometimes, you know, I so commute to meet people. Um, so I call cab, right, taxi. And sometimes I pre-book it. And, and every time they just don't turn up on time. And then I call back. And I say, hey, what's going on? Oh, so we are so busy. I said, but I booked in advance, right? What's the freaking point? So what does that convey my intention? It conveys my frustration, right? And and if the person don't understand, right, sitting on the other side of the spectrum, answering my call, don't understand my concern, 
then in my opinion, as a customer, that person should be doing the job, right? We should get rid of the person. I mean, that's beside the four point, your, you know, compassion and ethics or whatnot to support the incompetency. That's besides the, the scope of this discussion. But what I'm trying to say is sentiment analysis, right? If you are, the, your statement should convey the, uh, the expression or emotions that comes out of it is a positive one. If, if, if let's say I call Gary and I say, Hey Gary, I uh, just wanted to have a chat and I'm pretty impressed with um, what you've been doing. And I really wanted to take you out for a coffee, right? Just to show that appreciation. So what does that tell you? It tells, uh, this, you know, tells you that it is a positive expression, right? It's a positive statement because I'm appreciating someone else's work, right? So that's the sentiment analysis. And then intent analysis. Intent means what exactly you're trying to do, right? Like my intention is, let's say, for instance, I, let's, this example is very good, right? Uh, the Salesforce one. I can't log into my account, into customer uh, support chatboard. So intent analysis will understand that, okay, to help access the account. So what exactly are you trying to do? What exactly are you trying to achieve? That's the intent analysis is about. Then context, right? It's very important to understand the context, right? Um, so, with, so like I gave you an example, sub coffee, right? If you don't understand the context, you might wonder what the heck the sub coffee means. Are you saying you want a coffee? Are you asking someone to go out for a coffee? And what coffee you were talking about? Is that even a coffee conversation, or is it something else you're talking about, right? Or you call someone coffee is as a nickname because someone drinks too much of coffee. Uh, people assume that you nicknamed them as a coffee man or something like that, right? So it's that's where the context analysis comes in the picture, right? You understand what that context is about. So the software needs to understand what the context is about before giving out the desired output. Otherwise, you can't do that, right? So yeah, that's in a nutshell what natural language processing uh, parsing uh, concept uh, because we uh, I spoke a little bit more compared to last time but it's very important for me to make you guys understand uh, from a from a from a general term right we, I didn't use any technical jargon I hope not and if you think this is a technical jargon then I really expect you to step up a bit because we can't really simplify to a ground zero level because there are certain things which is technology bound and it's very important that you understand technology. Do I support that everyone should be, you know, encouraged to, you know, um, understand what's going on uh, from a tech landscape uh, in an, in a language everyone can understand. But at the same time, there are certain things you can't reach to the ground zero, right? NLP is one of them. It's it makes sense from a broader user discussion perspective, but not from a very, you know, but I can't make it completely you know, whitewash to make it like a plain, uh, simple language. It's, it, it can, it, it is challenging, right? So, uh, so yeah. So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Saturday. Adios.